pulled my push rods and kept them in order. And upon further inspection, I'm going to need to take that fuel line right there off. And to get that off, I'm going to have to take that lower valve cover off. So that's going to be next. And I'm considering removing those injectors so I can clean them very well in the parts wash tank. For now, I'm going to just set the upper valve cover back on and put rags everywhere I can and blast the dirty areas away from those screws holding the lower valve cover on. I'm going to get as much dirt and junk away from it as I can before I actually pull it apart and break that seal. Well, that wasn't so bad. I ended up uh, taking my shop vac and throwing a strip of duct tape across it. So it made all the velocity want to go right there. And just use that uh, to scrape away all the excess dirt. There was quite a bit. And um, I plugged the three oil drain holes in the head. It's the only ones I could see. And now I have exposed the hold down clamps for the injectors and I've also exposed the lower row of head bolts um, I did since I covered up all the drain holes and I'll probably end up doing like a, a diesel fuel pressure wash it'll be good and messy but I'm gonna get all the extra junk out of there that I can find um, but I blew out the injectors really well too and they cleaned up very well so I might throw some uh, like penetrating oil on those threads and maybe even wire brush them um, just to clean them up and uh, make sure everything is good and clean before reassembly but I actually don't think I need to take them apart now they're a whole lot cleaner inside where it matters than what they needed, what they were before. And, um, but these, these fuel injection lines, they're still pretty junky. So I'm going to clean them up, blow them out the best I can. And then, uh, once again, I'll, I'll go after them with the, uh, the parts washer too. Make sure all that junk's out of them before reassembly. So you might have seen this before in some of my videos too. This is a poor man's pressure washer. But the good thing about it is I can use whatever solvent I want, like diesel fuel. So um, diesel should do a really good job of cleaning this very well. I am guessing it's going to be very dirty for me. There's probably gonna be a lot of spray back. I'm gonna use a rag to kind of try to block it, but I'm not guessing that it's going to be perfect. Um, forgot my rag. Good job cleaning, but it kind of 
I fogged the shop up. So I've got the windows, the doors open. I've got my high power shop fan blowing some air outside, pulling some fresh air through the shop. But I am happy with the way that worked out. Somebody might ask, why head bolts and why head studs? Head bolts are what come from the factory and they should do the job, but obviously I'm doing this project because of blown head gaskets. So, this is a factory head bolt, okay? A Duramax engine has like 17.5 to 1 compression ratio, okay? So, um, I don't know what the bore size is, but we'll say 4 inches, all right? So, 17 to 1. So, for every volume amount, 17 times the pressure. Um, if it was a 4-inch diameter cylinder... Um, area is pi times diameter, so 3.1514 or 1415. We'll say 3 times 4 is 12. 12 inches times whatever that volume is or depth to make the volume, 17 times. Now we're talking boost on top of that, and boost. Um, say now that I'm going to be doing some work on the turbo um, will be about 30 psi of boost which is a little bit more than two times the atmospheric pressure so all of that times 17 times 2 bar we're looking at um, at least 300 psi cylinder pressure stock then if you add more fuel if you add more air now you're looking at even more cylinder pressure. Once you get to that, these head bolts don't have the PSI strength of studs of today. Um, this exotic, exotic performance um, head stud kit has 220,000 PSI stretch strength, okay? Looking at a bolt in just the manufacturing process, there's a little bit of a radius. Let's see. A little bit of radius in that bolt. But this is still um, an area where this could pop right off. It could shear, all right? Looking at this thread, if we have a thread and we put a nut on it, we're holding all of those spots, whatever the height of the nut is, versus that one shear point. So the stud and nut will um, hold more, plus the material is now stronger. So it's going to be able to hold up to more cylinder pressure. And that's a good one. thing. We need to clean those threads out. Um, the, the bolt looks pretty clean, but what I'm gonna do is just blast it with a little bit of air. Clean rag. That just ensures that I'm actually going to be able to bottom this out. And I'm supposed to be able to do this by hand. I also have two different thread pitches. This coarse thread is what's going into the head or the block. And this is actually supposed to go further into the block than a, um, than a head bolt would have. So now I have good threads in the block that haven't been stretched before. Fine thread is what I'm going to use to tighten the nut.
not cranking on this. I'm not trying to wreck the threads, but I did notice that it screwed in really well and then stopped. And then I had to pick up some new threads. So I'm down as far as it can be, okay? Now, I have some washers and I have some special lube, okay? And I'm going to, <laughs> I'm gonna open it. Okay, it's coming out. I'm gonna make sure there's nothing in the way, all right? All the way around the threads. The reason we lube the threads is to make sure that none of the torque is falsified by maybe a, a bit of something in the way of the threads. Okay. We're also going to throw a little lube on the washer both sides. And on the nut. On that surface. Alright. Now my maximum torque spec on this is going to be 125 foot-pounds. I'm going to, you always store your torque wrench at zero, so you don't have to keep tension on it all the time. And I'm going to start at, I'm gonna go 50 foot pounds. Gotta find a spot where I can do this. And I'm waiting for this head to click. So now, I'm going to wait a little bit, and while I do that, I'm going to go from 55 to 90 foot-pounds, and that'll be my second step. I'm always going to do every single stud in three steps to get to my, to my 125 torque spec, okay? Wait, now I'm going to try it again. There we go. It's a good solid click. I know that I'm there. All right. Now, let's bring it up to 125. And this is in 15, 15 foot pound increments going back and forth. See that? So my dial here resets after 14, 15 or zero. So I'm at 115 plus 10. That's my 125. This is the important one. Go. Now 
some people, when you're doing wheel studs, they'll click, 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 click to make sure. But me making sure was doing it in three steps and making sure I had that one good solid click and I'm done. So that is one. And my torque sequence is as such. So I started right here. Now I'm going to go straight up and then find three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you see it's working in a circle from the center. And that's to make sure that I'm making even pressure on that cylinder and kind of squashing it out as I go. So now that I got that one done, I only have like 18 or so more to go or 17 more to go but I'm pretty dang excited. So, uh, I'm gonna take a rest. It's getting pretty late, and I will see y'all in the morning. Thanks for watching, everybody.